All right, welcome to the first Jumping the Rail podcast of 2024. This is Mark Ribbon coming to you from the Noodles position in Champaign, Illinois. Joined as always by my buddy Menders. And Menders, it's uh, <laughs> can we hope that we can just kick 2024 square in the nuts and please? And, can can I have a mulligan, please? I th- I think you deserve a mulligan. <laughs> I think we need a mulligan. You need to just strut into the new year, Menders. I, I am going to strut into the new year. Unfortunately, I strutted right into the emergency room with my mother. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was not that was not a good way to start the year, Menders. Not at all, but it is what it is. She's okay, so. Well, that's the important thing. Getting the phone call though at ten thirty in the morning saying, "Where are you at?" Mm. I fell and hit my head. Oh, well, okay. It's not a good. Uh, that's not a good message to receive. But she's a tough old bird. Yeah, evidently. Uh, just did the dog trip her? I'm just curious. No, it was not the dog. <laughs> it was not sugar. Did the dog try to eat her until she could get up? <laughs> no, she okay. was outside when it happened. Oh, that's. Okay. She was putting up Christmas decorations back in the shed, and she tripped over the step to the shed. Ah. Uh, and went head first into the door frame. That is metal. Ooh. Yeah. That's Seven that's... staples and two pretty black eyes later. Well, I'm not going to be the insensitive jerk that asks you to for pictures to put on the podcast, but I am glad that she's doing all right, Menders. Well, well, I sent you pictures, so. You did, but I wasn't going to put them on the podcast. But... I'd appreciate it because it's pretty gross. <laughs> yeah, it's not pretty. That's for it's sure. not pretty. <laughs> so In fact, quite... I... You know what? Here, this is this is this is how good it was. Mm-hmm. I was debating on whether or not to send you guys those pictures, and then I remembered we watched AEW, and I was like, "Oh, it's fine. It's not going to bother anybody." <laughs> As you yeah, wear I'm... your JTF and our shirt, and I wear my Tony's Florida style booking. So yes, I'm actually multitasking. I got World Zen playing in the little window here on the corner of my screen. I got Raw going on my uh, on my phone just. Just in case I miss something when we discuss. Ah, but, uh, okay. Well, good. You'll have to fill me in because I'm still having problems with Bleacher Report. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have to skip to the high spots on the world's end. I just saw the end of the eight-man tag match with the. Uh, <laughs> okay. Mark where, where are dancing we with starting at tonight? <laughs> well, you know what? Can we start on a high point? Let's start on a high point, Minish. What's on your mind? So I watched NXT last week. Mm-hmm. And it's been a minute since I've watched NXT. But Eddie Thorpe and Dijak, yes. did you happen to catch any of this match? I missed the match, but I've seen Eddie Thorpe quite a bit. And I'm I'm a, everybody knows I'm a fan of Dijak. So. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Dijak. And I was impressed. I was real impressed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested. I, I don't think it'll be long for Eddie's on the main roster, honestly. Wow. I think he's still a little on the green side from what I've seen of him. He is, but but with him working, I think the more veterans he works with, especially like Dijak, Mm -hmm. um, get him in there with Ilya. Corbin would be huge for him. Corbin would be great for him. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, please. Although, 2023 did kind of end on a sad note. They broke up one of my favorite tag teams. Jetson and Bay, or yeah. Oh, Brig- Briggs and Jensen. Briggs and Jensen. Yeah, I was I like kind that, of bummed uh, about that. I like that Briggs. He's he's a. I do like Briggs. I like Briggs a lot. But they're all going their separate ways now. Yeah, I think I think they're going to be giving Briggs a push. I hope so. Seen of them. I but, really uh, hope so. Menders, uh, you're going to be th- glad to know I found a couple more Tony pictures I can put into oh, the rotation. Oh, joy. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, oh, I forgot the good one. Hang on. Oh, sure I got oh there's a good one? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you've seen it. Oh, oh, joy. Have I been trying to forget it since i seen it? <laughs> Probably. Don't you do that with all of the Tony pictures? <laughs> Pretty much. All right, get it into the rotation. I'm just really there glad that he wasn't the du- Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. His Leona Helmsley picture. Yeah. 
terrible. <laughs> it's sad that on a on a, a week when we lost Killer Khan, we've got to talk about Tony now. Yeah. Well. <sighs> yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. And there's a lot to talk about going on in AEW, especially behind this. Oh dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be your uh, wallpaper at home, Menders. I'm going to make No, 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 no. But uh, there's a lot to talk about, especially behind the scenes at AEW. Yeah, uh, I'm just now getting to the match between Miro and Andrade El Idolo on the pay-per-view, which apparently was Andrade's last match in AEW. And apparently the crowd was dead. They did yeah, not care. Yeah, I got care. it on mute so I can't hear the crowd. But... They Apparently they did not care. And that says something. That's a shame because these are two of my favorite guys on the roster. Yeah, and it was dead. Nobody. Well, I you know I heard it today because I tried to watch some highlights on YouTube or whatever, just catch the highlights of it. But mm-hmm. um, they said it was a lot like when Goldberg and Brock Brock had their last match because just... they knew that one of them was leaving. Yeah, they knew they were leaving, so nobody and really cared who won or who lost. Yeah. Cause... I mean, this match, just from the... I'm just assuming, because I'm just ready to start watching it now. I'm going to assume it was every bit as good as it could be, which is, like, worlds better than Brock and Goldberg was at WrestleMania 20. Right, but nobody really seemed to care. Yeah. It's, from what I heard, it was just a weird crowd altogether. It uh, was a weird pay-per-view altogether. Honestly. Well, you know, our our favorite Canadian had to go and cast a pall over the proceedings again. Although, I know uh, we saw, I think, AJ sent us a statement that was made about that. So, I don't know. Uh, I gotta read more into that before we I didn't cast. finish. I didn't finish reading that one, so... It was, it was a little wordy, but, you know... It was a little wordy. Yeah. But, yeah, from the sounds of it, they did not take to Jericho very well on the pay-per-view. No. Not at all. Uh, I heard there was NDA chance. I heard there was. I saw a sign said "World's NDA." Yeah, that's. I saw that too. <laughs> oh my goodness! Now but... I, I'm just curious. Did they sing? Did they sing when he came out? I have no idea. Oh, for Pete's sake! Yeah, your camera's being cool Never. again. I I got to get a new USB port thing for my computer because I think that's the problem. Okay. But yeah, that, there was that. As long that. as you still hear my dulcet tones, we're good. Hey, uh, before we get into World's End Menders, there's something we got to bring up. And I know we, we're we going to talk about this on the shootout tomorrow also. But this kind of this spans all the indies. Is this what on, I think it is? On January 20th, there's a four-way match for the Zero-One USA's Junior Heavyweight <laughs> Championship. Here's the picture. This is no, what that we was the given. first No, picture. no, this is what we were given. I'm, I'm getting to it. Okay. So you got the Cobra, uh, one of our, our guys, is going to be defending against Victor Analog, Gary J, and Warhorse, who I know a lot of fans know from... All of those guys have oh. been on our other podcast. Yes. But uh, uh, Warhorse has been in a bit of a, uh, what do we call it, identity crisis? Uh, oh he's no, he's grumpy. discovered exactly who he is. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Zero One dropped this new thumbnail for, for this match for the 20th, and... Uh, yeah, we got it. we're getting a different warhorse here, not the fun loving Slim Jim chewing up. Oh no, he's he's not the fun. He is not the fun le- fun loving guy anymore. I, I don't think he cares about ruling ass anymore. I think he's about kicking ass. Yes, and I can say that because I watched, I got on IWTV this week and watched uh-huh. his match with Marcus Mathers. Uh huh, and. It's a to- it's a totally different fighting style. He doesn't go to the top rope as much. He's more of a I'm gonna punch. He's more of a striker. So him and Decobra and Victor and Gary J and Gary J. <laughs> oh, yeah, they all have the same <laughs> fighting style right now, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm here for it. I, I can't wait. He destroyed. Okay, I'll put it this way. It was a tap out, is how he won. From, from pummeling. Yes. Ooh. Oh my! Yeah. So we, so we have that to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, and I that's your somebody... one show is going to be ridiculous. Yes, uh, I saw somebody Warhorse put something out with the new look and everything, and somebody commented Dark Horse in the comments. <laughs> I 
don't know if but, I go with Dark Horse, but no, well, he's wearing he's wearing black now, so he that's is there, and he has new gear, and oh my, yeah. I love the new gear. Is he still Warhorse? They they announced him as Jake Parnell, Warhorse. Oh, so he's bringing back the real name. He <laughs> is, and I'm here for it because yeah. Is... And he's had such a cavalcade of gimmicks over the years that it's kind of cool to see. It's going to be cool to see him, like, I don't know if this is him being himself or this is what he was driven to, but but I'm looking forward to it on on the 20th. And... You don't often get a junior heavyweight hoss fight, Menders. We're going to get a junior heavyweight hoss fight. We sure are. We're going to get one. Yes. Yes, yes. So can we talk, since we're talking indies real quick. Can I talk about the show I went and saw Sunday yeah, or let's Saturday? Talk about, let's talk about the show you went to. I went to Signal 10 over in okay. Brazil, Indiana. And I went over knowing that I was going to know a few of the people that were wrestling. So that helped out. Um, but <laughs> our old buddy Sage Phillips was there. Oh, boy. And he fought uh, Aaron Atlas. And Aaron Atlas was our fun jerk that we all love and adore <laughs> and he yelled at me a lot and I didn't have Bari there to tell him to shut up so they could get in a little third grade argument about you shut mm. up no you shut up you were the one who should be shutting up yeah exactly <laughs> um, but Aaron Atlas won that one and Jake Ullman was there nice and Brandon Day, have you said you never heard of Brandon Day? I have not right? heard of Brandon Day. So his 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 whole thing, his shtick, is he is the unchained one, the unchained Brandon Day. So I kept hearing a chain, the entire show. So I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> are you um, are you thinking what I'm thinking, or do you I know am, what I'm thinking? I do. <laughs> Because the whole time, every time he would walk around, I could hear the chain. I'm like, where the hell's Conley? Where's Conley? <laughs> <laughs> I kept looking for him. Um, but Jake Ullman won that one. Cool. Uh, looking forward to buddy, him at the expo. Yes, he will be there. I yep, we'll have to do an update him. of the guest list when we get a, a minute here, Menders, for the yep. Sports Circle Expo. We can do that. And then Jay Silva fought Dutch Platinum. Dutch Platinum Dutch Pla is That's like, a good name. Dutch Platinum oh, is a good Oh, no, he got booed out of the building. No, I'm not saying he's a good wrestler. I'm, I mean, the name is great. Yeah, well, he's Dutch <laughs> Platinum, and that he faced your new he faced your new favorite, Jay Silva. Uh, Jay Silva, and yes. And Jay took a beating in this one. <laughs> but he came out as the winner. Yeah. Um, we had Ashton Adonis. Okay. I don't think you've heard. You haven't seen him. I have seen him. I've he heard actually of him. I haven't seen him. Well, he tag teams with Dutch, or he had tag teamed, not with Dutch, maybe, no, it wasn't Dutch Platinum, but I saw him in a tag team at the other show I went to a couple weeks ago, um, but he fought our loud and proud Logan Myers. Uh, Logan Myers, he's a local boy. Uh-huh. Well, local-ish. Well, We're familiar with him. Yeah. Yep. Um, Logan won that one. Big Al was there. Ah, Alice Crowley. Against Leela Feist. Okay. Uh, Big Al, of course, won. Leela, uh, she was good. She's still green. And she's still a usual baby face. And we got badass Alice Crowley. So nice. I was excited. And then they had card subject to change. You always got to have a card subject to change. Have to. We do it here. Hey, and actually, I'm going to plug our guy that's on the podcast tomorrow. Uh-huh. Which is Clayton Clark, the sheriff of Shotgun City. Yeah, that guy. Except. <laughs> and, but guess who he fought? Dalton Davis. Hey, Dalton Davis. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. The butt like so, brawler himself. Yep. And. <laughs> yeah, so we can have fun with Clayton tomorrow. He was He's looking forward to the podcast tomorrow. That's what, that's what you were telling me. So, uh, but fun. Dalton won. And then our main event. So what they ended up doing was all these matches they were having, whoever won them is now going after their title belt at the next show. 
So okay. they'll split it back up into there was six, so they'll have three matches then next time. But uh the main event was damn right Sam Knight. Yes. Versus Austin Ryan. Ooh, hoss fight. It was a hoss fight. Um had a good time with that one. Got yelled out a lot in that one too. And uh Mr. Not Ray by Fair, Sam though. Oh no, not by Sam. Um, but uh Mr. Ace Perry actually made an appearance, I forgot to say this earlier, in uh, Aaron Atlas's match against Sage Phillips. So, sounds like Mount Olympus is uh, keeping it together. So, yeah. Is but, Ace uh, in Mount Olympus? He was not, he, I don't think he was yet. Bari, correct me if I'm wrong. He, no, he was not. But I think they've... Uh, reached out and added a few people to their yeah. mix. But uh, Austin did lose and Sam Knight won. However, the general manager there actually came out during the no DQ match and kicked Sam in the nether regions. Hmm. Trying to put That's... over and then yelled at Austin about what are you doing? You were supposed to win. So I'm interested to see their next show is going to be March 1st. And it's really not that much further than where we usually go for the Terre Haute shows. So it's like maybe another 20 minutes. So it's not that's, a whole lot worse. I, I was still home by like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Well, so, considering that that's how we do a lot of our booking meetings uh, is in the van. That's just makes it more useful. Yeah. If, so, yeah. If, if weekends cooperate, then I would, I'd be down to check it out if we can get the boys and everybody all together. The only thing is they do start a little, they start, I think they start at six. So we would, that'd be five our time. So we need to leave by like 3.30, 3.34 o'clock. And you said it's March 1st? March 1st. Let's see. So... And um, to the top is what they're calling. Hey, I'm off that weekend. Ooh. March 1st is a Friday. You know what? It is a Friday, so that may not work. March 2nd? No, it's March 1st. I'm oh. looking at it. It's March 1st. Oh, yeah. I will be working till 2.30 that day. But, uh... The show starts at 6.30, though. Yeah. Well, if we can make it happen, then... Uh... We might be able to, because I'm off by 4. All right. Uh, let's discuss this off air. Okay. <laughs> no, it's more fun when everybody can come join us. <sighs> But uh, yeah, so, okay, so that was, I, I was impressed with that one. They did a really mm -hmm. good job. It is family friendly. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Man, Andrade's good. Sorry, he just <laughs> did the double moonsault thing he does off the top rope. Uh-huh. Where he runs on his feet and does another moonsault. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we'll have to talk about, think about getting in with Signal 10 too, because okay. there's a... There is a podcast that works with them, too, over there called The Diner. Okay. So I haven't had a chance to listen to them yet, but I think I'm going to check it out. So Cool. Well, Minders, before we get into World's End here, uh, I want to kind of set the table for 2024, if you will, here. So just as a, as a short, just a, a setup, I have a, all the major world champions in uh, the big companies lined up, and I want to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick your brain. I'm going to throw a picture up, and I want to see if you can predict who you want to see take the belt off of them. Oh, okay. Okay, now I have Impact and I have New Japan. I know you don't really know them very well. Right, so we might have a but, little but bit of a problem, but I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll save, I'll save them for last. Okay. Well, if Barry's right, still listening, first... maybe he can throw in his two cents, because he's he knows a few yeah. of those guys. Yeah. All right. And I'm not sure so, who was on the injured sure. list and all that fun stuff, so. Well, that's neither here nor there, but uh, oh, it looks like Drew is foiling a cash-in attempt. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, oh, we'll talk about that. In the face. We'll talk about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Back to, back to topic here. First up, uh, yes. let me see here. There you go. Ilya Dragunov, NXT champion. And this is tricky because... You never know who's going to be called up to the main roster or not. Right. But I'm, I'm a fan. I, 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 I'm, I'm 
going out on a limb here, and I might be out on the limb by myself. But Royal mm-hmm. Rumble's not that far away. Uh huh. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Trick doesn't take it off of him tonight, or if there's a couple different there's a couple different scenarios I'm seeing that could happen, and I feel like Triple H kind of books the same way we do to an extent. Well, so this is, this is strong um, booking NXT. Well, yeah, but they all kind of share a brain. Um, That's true. Like me and Barry. <laughs> exactly. And then I throw in the wrenches in the system on occasion. <laughs> you, you do. <laughs> but so my thought is, unless they're splitting up Trick and, Car- and Mello, I th- Trick could very well take it off of Iliad tonight. However... I don't think anybody else is quite there yet. Um, maybe, well, I take that back. Dijak could take it off of him. Yeah, I could see Dijak. I, I, Dijak. But he Corbin, got beat last Corbin week by Eddie it. Thorpe, so. Yeah, yeah. Corbin's been, uh, I think Braun's, I don't know. Barry says Braun, but I think Braun's going to get called up, so. I got a feeling you're right at some point. Uh, I mean, he's the obvious choice if he's staying in. NXT. If he's staying. Right. Shoot. But we then mentioned, again, I mean. Briggs? I don't think Briggs is quite I don't there think yet. He, he might not win the belt, but I'll bet he could get a fun match with Ilya. I bet he could too. He's been working his butt off. You know, though, the other one I wouldn't mind seeing come back to NXT because he's just kind of gotten lost in the main roster is Cameron Grimes. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think he would, he could get that big pop if he came back and won the NXT title. But and as long as he also, goes back to the original gimmick. And I'm also a fan of um, Nathan Frazier. So yes. there's, yes, there's yes, some yes. names out there for you in NXT. And I don't think Nathan Frazier's going anywhere anytime soon. No, he's, um, I think he's got a nice spot there. If Duke Upon Hudson finally turned turns on Andrade. On... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> if, if, uh, if Duke Hudson can get away from Chase U. Why was he ever there in the first place? He shouldn't be there. But if we could get Duke Hudson away from Chase U, he would Bring give another. gambler one. back. Yes, I want that gambler back. But I think he would be another one that would give Ailey out a run for his money. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. And What about uh, you? Actually, Are you in agreement or what? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of in agreement. Trick is the obvious choice right now. Right. Just because he's. Red Hot is a baby face. I don't think it'll be Melo. I think Melo, same with Braun, I think Melo's going to be going up to the main roster sooner than later. But I could see Melo foiling tricks. Because if Braun is going up, they need oh, yeah. another major. I could see I could see Trick winning the title, Melo turn on Trick, then Trick get a title defense against Melo on his way out. I could see that. But then, So then Iliad goes up so he can fight Gunther? I would love that because they've they've had two matches that I know of between we NXT need a UK match. and NXT. They, yeah, Wait, number one. Yeah, they're one, one of our one. guys. Let's get that. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. He's got a belt. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so this speaking of the expo, we just got word a couple days ago that there's going to be an NWA title defense there, Menders. Yeah. We're very excited about. So we got to talk about EC3. Yep. Looks like a in the face looks like an old catcher's mitt, <laughs> but body wise it looks like a million bucks. Um, now I don't. I'm going to be talking with Joe Galley here in a, about a week on the special uh, presentation of the Jumping mm-hmm. the Real podcast. So we're gonna I'm gonna pick his brain about some of the talent in uh, the NWA. But I have my ideas who I think it should be. Okay, who do you think it should be? Because I. I have an idea, but I'm not sure if they're really NWA affiliated, so... Well, assuming that he drops the national championships sometime soon, I would love to see it be the Throwbilly Silas Mason. He's the guy that played uh, Bam Bam Gordy in the Von Erichs movie, as, as an aside. But okay. Everything I've seen, he's a big guy. He, I mean, he looks like Gordy. And okay. he moves well. He's got a great finish. He's a big brawler type. And he's in a 
dominant group, the Southern Six, with Kerry Morton and Alex Taylor. And uh, I think it could, I think it would be a hell of a match with uh, Silas and EC3. So that's my pick. Okay. Well, I didn't know. Would somebody? And I'll ask you this because I'm not an NWA. I haven't been following it like you have. So okay. I may be on the verge of looking dumb here. But what about Jack Vaughn? I know him and EC3 have gone at it before for at OVW. Uh-huh. So That'd be a cool crossover. I wouldn't I'm, mind yeah, seeing that. I haven't seen him on like NWA Power, like on the YouTube okay. shows or anything. But that doesn't mean he hasn't worked in a NWA affiliated territory. Because I know EC3's gotcha. promotion in Ohio. In Ohio uh, in Ohio, I think it is. I think they're in NWA territory now. Okay. Well, then so he's, I mean, could, he he does pretty much all of the Ohio shows, so. Dude, what if we get, can we, I know Heather probably isn't listening to this one. Can we get EC3 against Jack Vaughn at the Expo? I kind of wondered. <laughs> I kind of wondered. Yeah, thigh slap in good time, would it not? It would be a great thigh slap in good time. And I can't wait. I'm getting my new Jack Vaughn shirt, and I'm going to wear it to the Expo. Nice. Hopefully we can get him on the pod at some point. I'm hoping. I'm I'm giving him time. Hey, you know what? Thoughts and prayers go out to him right now. Oh, yeah. Because he just kinda, lost his dad. So he's had a rough week for sure. He's yeah. had a rough week too. So thoughts and prayers. Yes, I'm sure thoughts. he'll get back with us when he oh, kind of yeah. gets things figured out a little bit. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's move on, Menders. Uh, WWE side here. Seth Rollins. I think we both have our idea who it's going to be. Probably. You know, the guy that killed AEW. <laughs> yeah, the cancer. <laughs> the cancer. Oh, man, I listened to that corny omnibus. Of I've been listening to it, too. Two. I'm about halfway through it. <laughs> just, like... just listening to it back again just reminds me just how fucking ridiculous that whole situation was from, from the get-go, from all mm-hmm. out. 2022. Well, start as I say, starting with Paige. Well, yeah, because that's when we started the Omnibus Paige. was Paige's promo. Yes, so dumb. Jeez. What was oh, getting me dude. was uh, Uncle Dave and is it Alvarez? Alvarez? Yeah, saying how well Puck needs to apologize for what? <laughs> <laughs> for what? Oh. Reacting. Okay. <laughs> Jack Perry should be thanking him for not beating the piss out of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, <sighs> Let's well, okay. We, we we jumped the rail. Okay, if it's if it's not punk, who mm-hmm. who else are you thinking? It has to be punk. <laughs> it's gotta it's gotta be punk. But it's gotta if be it's punk. Not, if it's not punk, I always come back to Drew, but Drew just lost it again last night or for uh, in his title match. He did. I mean, there's always Priest. He's got that briefcase. So. He does have the brief. And I think Priest is going to use it on Rollins at some point. So, actually. What? But, just, but I don't want to use but I don't want to use Priest as a transitional champ, either. What if Punk beats Rollins and then Priest cashes in on Punk at Mania? That was. I had that but, thought. That'd be like the second or third time somebody's cashed in on Punk in his in his career, though. Yeah. If you really want to piss the fans off, you'd have Priest cash in on Cody after he beat Roman. Well, <laughs> if that happens. So, I'm glad you brought that up. And, well, we'll, we'll gloss over it now. We'll come back to it. But, uh, listening to Busted Open today, and I heard a really good suggestion that could make everybody happy in this case. Okay. Elimination Chamber is in Australia. Mm-hmm. I guess they're going to be in a 70-some thousand seat house for, for this. It's going to be a big deal. Okay. And there was a suggestion made that Bully Ray seemed to enjoy that said have Rock versus Roman there for the title. Roman pins Rock. Then he gets Cody at Mania. Cody wins the Chamber match in Australia. So then you still get that big match with Rock and Roman because the point was made that they don't need a championship, but they also don't need WrestleMania for for the angle. Right. The the Cody Roman stuff is it's got to be at Mania. Just just does to, it have to be? I think it does. I it just 
for because the story started at WrestleMania last year, and just to bookend it, I think it's got to be. But then that's going to be Cody winning back to back Rumbles. Not no no he I have him winning the Chamber. I think oh. Punk wins the Rumble. Okay. I think Punk wins the Rumble and challenges Rollins, and then Cody wins the Chamber and gets Roman. So this is the thing right now. All their top guys don't need the belt for this to be a big deal. They they have an embarrassment of riches as it comes to top talent right now. They really do right With now. With all the guys that came back, you got Orton came back, AJ came back, Punk came back. Then you got your Rollins and your Romans and your Cody's and your LA Knights on a slightly smaller scale. Because I think he's getting Logan Paul at Mania, the U.S. title. Then you got Gunther. So... They really got to, they haven't been this flush with top guys in a long time. I know. And it, it's so fun because you don't know where it's going. It's exactly. not as obvious. But, but that's it's been painfully obvious who's getting what. Yep. And now you don't know. It could be anybody. They could literally do a, spin a wheel, like a, like a roulette wheel and just pick somebody. Yeah. Dartboard. Let's do this. Right. Yep. And all of them, my... there's a reason I'll take this picture there. off my dartboard, and then I'll oh. put the... <laughs> <sighs> All right, what's my next one? Okay, well, we kind of talked about Roman, uh, but I'll, I'll throw the picture I up. I still don't think you need to have Rock and Roman with the belt, though. No, you don't have to, but just... If Cody Rhodes wasn't involved in this angle at all, then it would make... Perfect sense. It'd be Rock and Roman at Mania for the title. The only thing, are you going to get Rock to travel all the way over to Australia? Well, that's the other thing. The other option you have is, uh, I believe it's Orton challenging Roman at the Rumble. Mm-hmm. What if you have Orton win the belt at the Rumble? Maybe have the Rock do something to distract Roman. Maybe have him cost Roman the title, then Orton gets the belt and gets Cody. Then and you got then that Rock mentor, Minty. It. Then Rock, Rock and Roman at WrestleMania. Yeah. And then you have... Then the only question is, who gets the main event spots out of those three matches? Because you got Rollins, Punk, Rock, Roman, Cody, Orton. Well, one will be one night. You'll probably well, yeah. have... I'm guessing Rollins, Punk, one night. That's got it. Punk will be furious if he doesn't get a main event at Mania. <laughs> You're winning the Rumble. Plus, at it's winning the cancer. Rumble, so that's got to be it. At I damn cancer. Cody, Cody and Orton, I think, could open... <laughs> One of the nights. I think I do It'd too. A... And I, I'm okay with the with the championship belt going on first. Yeah. Or on the other hand, maybe Rock says, Hey, I don't want to stay here all night. Can I go on first? Like how Lesnar did. Yeah. <laughs> but then you get Rock and Roman first. But yeah. It it could be anything. You could even put one in the middle of the show, like uh before yeah, the Yeah, don't put them in the middle. Right. No, leave that for the U the US champ and the international and the Intercontinental. You almost said international champ. I did I almost AEW. Did. <laughs> no, I don't watch. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm watching Tony Storm manhandle, woman handle Riho right now. <laughs> Would you say Tony called her a mouse the other day? Yeah, he called her a mouse. <laughs> oh, Riho. Oh, Tony. I love Tony Storm sometimes. You know what? For all the, as much criticism as we have about AEW sometimes, I, I said it, Tony's my favorite part of AEW right now. And it would only get better if when Dan Housen starts stalking her. <laughs> uh, I mean it. All right. I, no, so, but okay. Are, do we want to talk real quick? Can we talk real quick about last night and how the former champion was supposed to come out oh. at the nine o'clock hour last night? Well, let's let's come back to that here. Uh, okay. Well, you know what? I think we've got it just about covered. The only thing we didn't cover is uh, is Joe. As we know, he won the uh, AEW title on Sunday. It's as much as I don't want to see a heel versus heel match. I, I think it's got to be Swerve. Hey, it's AEW, and Swerve is the heel baby face. They're both heel baby faces, which is terrible. Um, right. Does it gotta be Swerve? Oh my goodness! So Tony Storm was on Luther's shoulders, and she just gestured like a jockey to make him run so she could run Riho into the, off the apron. <sighs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Tangent no, over. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, 
if you really if you really got to do something here's the thing how long do we have it, it really all depends on the bidding war honestly it depends on if we get mjf still at AEW or not because yeah. rich holiday right rich holiday that's right richard right. holiday yeah richard holiday yeah. He's teasing on on Twitter. So is Hammerstone. They're both teasing. <laughs> With and a good time. <laughs> it's a real good, yeah, they're teasing about a good time. And if that happens, MJF's got to get it back. Eventually. I, I, I think MJF's already resigned. I'm, I'm going to bet that this is, okay. I think this is all a lip service just to build intrigue. But. He, I think he needs it back, but he doesn't need it right away. I think he can come back to do the business with Cole. He needs which... to come. He needs to heal up. Yeah. Let's get the surgery, whatever you got to do. Do what mm-hmm. you need to do to get 100%. Yeah, he's still young. He's got plenty of time. Yeah, he's he's still, well, yeah, I mean, he's 20, what, 27? 27, yeah. That, that's young so, for wrestling. Yeah. So... But hey, uh, referee made a decision. How about that? <laughs> he kicked Luther out. <laughs> the corpse moved. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> so anyway, paler than his wristbands. You know, you could do, you could go, <laughs> you could go that way. Uh, there's, they just don't have any baby faces that are worth a damn. Uh, the only ones they have are washed up. Darby. Was, well, they got Darby. Darby Darby is an option. Do and I they... hate I hate to say it. You you're going to hate me. But what if it's Cassidy? Oh, pockets. Yeah. Here's my question. Is it possible that they would give Sting a title with his retirement match at Revolution? God, I hope not. Me too. But it is Tony. If they do, it ought to be like a <laughs> go go back to your never mind. Go back to your couch in the back, Tony. Um, <laughs> they can't. They can't. They can't. If it's his no. retirement match, they can't. Who if they you, do, they're stupid. Who would you put in Sting's retirement match? Because I have my answer. Well, I mean, Uh, let me think about that one a minute. That was one you didn't give me a, a minute to think about. Yeah. Call um, in the ring. I know, I know. Well, the obvious... Get that thing out of the corner. Um, The obvious... The obvious choice would be Darby. In my opinion. That's Yeah, I'm the same way. That's the obvious choice. If it's not Darby... And I hate to even go there, but what about Sammy? Or even, ooh, what about Garcia? If he doesn't do the dancing. With Sting? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there any chance that Jericho gets in Tony's ear? And... Uh, after everything that's happened over the past couple weeks, I'm waiting to see what his fine is that he gets in an eco-friendly envelope. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, Barry, in a perfect world, it would be Muda. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. But, but I mean, because, yeah, Sting was in Muda's retirement match, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. So that would make perfect sense. It would. But what? how much sense does it make that Muda retired and now he's coming back out of retirement to do a retirement match? Well, nobody ever really retires in wrestling. Could be worse. It could be Flair. <laughs> you know, Flair, you know, Flair's set pitching it too. You know, the other one I wouldn't mind, and it's kind of off the wall. Would be like maybe like a lethal. Put Jay in there with him. Well, you'd get a mat. They get a good match that way. Or even Briscoe. Put Mark in with him. I'd I think either way. Both of them are, they're going to be good matches. It's just. I mean, but do you want to have a story or do you just want to have a match? Because it's. Well, that's the thing. What are, what are you, what are they going to make this out to be? I'll throw one out there. What about Christian? 
I mean, they got the history from TNA. They do. I'm I'm working on another uh, option for the top corner. Oh, okay. I wondered what you were doing. Yeah. I was I'm multitasking. I was, I was a little nervous about what you were doing. As I'm usually nervous every time you're <laughs> up to something. Hey, you were nervous about your birthday episode of the shootout, and I think I did pretty good. You did. But there's some of those I'm not going to forget anytime soon. Especially as particular uh, Mr. Malkin. <laughs> I'll remember. It's all right. I can't wait for you to see the Patreon. Oh, yeah. There's some... There's some interesting things to see in that uh, Patreon from what I heard. Oh, yes. Very interesting. And I have... And I have questions. I want to get your opinion on some things tomorrow. Just teaser for the uh, for the shootout. Okay. Regarding one uh, Joseph O'Reilly, but uh, but we'll get to it. Yep. Is I see Tony Storm got the yeah, here we go. Oh, that's better. I don't mind that one. That one's fine. <laughs> he can stalk me oh, yes. now. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hey, what? I'm gonna what? put that option on the shootout. Well, we got the shootout behind us right now, so. <laughs> yeah. There we go! Yay! Yep. All Make right. Sure so, what other what other tomorrow. belt you got for me to make a decision on here? All right. Well, like I said, we got Impact. I'm sorry. Actually, I think officially it is TNA now because uh, they said at the start of the new year they're going to go back to TNA. Okay. But uh, got Alex Shelley's champion right now, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh. And I don't think that they would do the tag team split up route and have Saban beat him. Right. I think it, my my brain is Josh Alexander. I think he because he that was who the, I thought he had to so. forfeit the he had to forfeit the title. So I think he, he never lost it. it. Yeah. Right. But Ooh, I love the run that Ari. Shelley's had with the belt, though. Ooh, Mike Bailey. Hey, Mike Bailey. I I'd, I'd be down for it. There you go. Mike Bailey made for an awkward conversation with the wife one night watching GCW. And yes, I'm the one that made it weird. Uh, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a theory about a, a strategy that could be employed when wrestling Mike Bailey. And Stacey looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you get him in a leg lock, you got to tickle his feet. <laughs> I'm not saying mess with the toes. I'm saying tickle the feet. It's an effective submission technique. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Far and way in. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got one last one. I'm not going to make you pick uh, New Japan because I know you don't know the product. But uh, I don't. Where's our AJ? AJ? Where's our AJ when we need him? <laughs> I think he's still working, isn't he? Oh, probably. Yeah. All right. Well, last one I got because technically it is a world title. It's a Ring of Honor as Eddie Kingston. I like this picture. I thought this was a cool shot that they got after the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. And I don't hate the new belt, the Continental belt. I think it's pretty sharp looking. Yeah. And again, this is Ring of Honor. So, I mean, which AEW mid-carder is going to be to Eddie for the belt? I'm still fuzzy, though. Because do you, does he defend all three at once? Does he defend See, I don't separately? know. I don't know. Are, are they going to bring... Well... We know Kota Ibushi's out, right? Because yeah, he, he hurt both of his ankles. Hurt both of his ankles, so he's out. Um, and they wouldn't do Will Osprey. No, he's going to be heavyweight he's, division. He's yeah. There's a guy that could beat Joe Osprey. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but is Osprey enough of a baby face to go after Joe? Well, Joe and might is be he safe face. enough? And is he safe enough? I think now, I think he is. I think in this iteration of Osprey, I think yes. Okay. Plus, then you got Don Callis, if he's still part of the Don Callis family. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you got that option. Mark Briscoe is always an option for Kingston. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yo. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Or lethal. That works. Or lethal. Or lethal, yeah. 
Got to give lethal something. No give kidding. Him no points the in that tournament. It's criminal. And then make him take the pin in the pay per view. Yeah. I mean, what did Jay Lethal do to piss off Tony Khan? Came in with Jarrett, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's just, he didn't come in with Jarrett. And by the way, I did watch the Zero Hour for the pay per view, and I was highly entertained by Jeff Jarrett on that show. I got through most of it. I got to. Um... I, I need to. I need to completely watch the whole thing, really, because yeah. Got watching Rose Chris Statlander, out right now. watching Statlander and Willow, that was rough. That was real yeah. rough. Yeah, it started off good, but then as it went on, it was... they were both wasted. And not they well, were not... just blown up. They're just blown <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, I'm not gonna say wasted because it wasn't yeah. wasted. It was Four just blown up. Yeah. <laughs> Especially at AEW. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah that's kind of... That match was just... Meh. Yeah, right now we got Swerve and Dustin Rhodes going on on my computer screen. Swerve beat his ass. <laughs> yeah, he's tuning up really good. I heard about that one. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know what was wrong with Keith Lee, but apparently he had some nagging injuries that were... He Apparently he's out. been fighting through some injuries for like over a year and a half. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Dude, I mean, stay I out of the ring then. Tough, but... AEW has enough problems with people being hurt. It's true. Because I'm still wanting Kyle O'Reilly to make it back. So, And does Kyle then... Sounds like Kyle's still got a ways to go. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Joe earlier. What about Wardlow? Or is that just too much? I think the boom's off the roads with Wardlow. Okay. He's, he's Cole's flunky now. So. He was MJF's flunky. Now he's Cole's flunky. So, should we just talk about the elephant in the room as it relates to AEW in the, in the pay-per-view? Wait, which one? The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> ah, that Marco one. fans will get this joke. Yeah. <laughs> the devil. The devil. Uh, and I, re- I honestly was... did not think it was going to be Cole. I, I, was, I was with you. I thought it was too obvious. I thought it was too. But maybe that's what we need to start doing when we're thinking about Tony Bookie. Obvious is gonna, yeah, him, that guy. I, <laughs> I still wore it better. Um, <laughs> oh, I hate that picture. I hate that picture. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go watch the scrum too, because good lord. You got two and a half hours to kill. Yeah. <sighs> He's got to be on something to be talking to the media for two and a half hours at eleven thirty in the in the evening. Well, where where was World's End at? Long Island. So it was. So it was like twelve thirty. Twelve thirty their time. So they were probably. He probably and then they the take an hour. Until, like, like from the an end hour of the break show. before. Yeah. So so show ends at twelve thirty. Scrum they starts start at one thirty. One thirty goes till. Four o'clock. Goes in the two and a half. So I'm gonna guess he probably didn't get to his hotel till six in the morning. At least. At least. Yeah. No. Nope. Oh, he's got such a great work ethic. No, he just wants to hear himself talk. Yeah. And he holds these poor bastards hostage in the media room to. <laughs> you know, they doesn't give a straight saying... answer to any questions. <laughs> right. That bugs me more than anything. Is that's never a straight answer. We can't talk about that. No. Well. Then don't let it happen. Yeah. Or keep Jericho out of the scrum. Mm-hmm. Shit, keep Jericho off the card. If that shit's going on. Just If you're going to suspend Punk and then fire him for the Jack Perry incident. when And I'm not... I don't know all the details on the whole story. But even if there's a, wrink, like a wrinkle of a story there. You got to take Jericho off TV until you know what's going on, right? You have to. They did with Sammy. Yeah. 
but because it's Jericho, he gets a, he gets carte blanche, as they say in fancy talk. <sighs> Does he have something on Tony? Well, Tony stuck with him for 10 years. At what point does Jer- or does Danielson step in? <laughs> no kidding. He's the head of the discipline committee. And if he did say something, would Jericho listen to him? That's that's the other kicker. Or is he going to go Dan- get in Tony's ear? Exactly. If Danielson tries to suspend Jericho, does Jericho go to Tony and say, hey, they're trying to suspend me. Yeah. So better do something about it. Then Tony's going to tuck tail and say, no, he's going to stay. He's our biggest star. Oh, bullshit. No, he's no. not, but okay. Well, Tony doesn't know how to treat a biggest star because he fired him. <laughs> That's true. <sighs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, and I love that this was the outfit he chose when he was talking about how the locker room was a safe place for women. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Spoiler Spoiler alert. <laughs> wow. <sighs> now you're suddenly adding on Burke. You know, I kind of, I really wish, I wish some of the women would actually speak up and say what that locker room's like. I mean, I know they say they do, but how much of it is lip service to stay, you know? That's that's true of any business, any company. It is. Which is, it's a sad state of affairs, really. It is, but... I, I just wish they would. To... I wish people would just be forward with it. I guess. All right, I'm skipping the Jericho match. Oh dear God! Please do. So Abaddon, Abaddon and Julia Hart worth watching? Uh, it was okay. Oh, I don't have that kind of time though. Okay. Okay, Edge and Christian will watch this. Okay, you can watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, how Edge came out in his uh, WrestleMania 22 attire. Well, like somebody said, I, I wish I could remember who I saw this on on YouTube. I think it was um, Wrestle something or other from England. But um, they were saying how this was pretty much an homage to Edge's whole career. Yeah. Because they did the that stupid flaming table spot. Are they ever going to get he, it right? I think he misjudged how far Nick Wayne was going to fly. Because I did see the replay of that. Nick Wayne's Take like, Tony out of the corner. Put Danhausen back up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But, yeah. And why is Shayna Wayne dressed like Catwoman? Well, doesn't everybody want to see that? As long as she's not talking, you know, she can wear what she wants. <laughs> if I never hear her cut another damn promo again in her life, it'll be too soon. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure she's perfectly nice, but come on. <laughs> I still can't believe that Dino... Sorry. Kill switch. Kill switch. <laughs> Dino douche. Um, <laughs> gave up his opportunity for the TNT Championship belt to Christian. I mean, I get it. This is a slow burn. They're, they're going to turn they're doing Dino something. baby face. Yeah, Dino's going to turn baby face. I just want to know what Christian has on him that he whispered in his ear to make him make him do it. He's like, I'll bring back Jack Perry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring back Marco Stunt. Well, he'd probably take Marco Stunt before Jack Perry. Yeah. So, I have a question. Shoot. Are we going to see Jack Perry again? Probably. Because I was really almost convinced he was going to... I had myself convinced yeah. he was going to be the devil. Yeah, you th- you thought he was going to be the devil. I'm I'm sure he'll be back at some point. The Bucks are going to make sure he's back. He's their boy, you know? Well, and the Bucks have got to come back as their asshole characters or whatever. So. Super dick party. Super dick party. <laughs> don't Google that. Life. Don't, don't Google that. <laughs> yeah, that's not... That's like Bang Bros. Don't Google it. <laughs> don't Google it. <laughs> But yeah, um, it's yeah. Matt's wife got uh, let go from her position as head merchandise. Do lady. you know where the problems at? And I'm I'm pulling I'm pulling a card from Cornette here, but all the higher ups are leaving. What mm-hmm. what why? What's going on in that locker room? I 
well, most of the higher ups are friends of the Bucks and all them. And I don't know. I'm I'm not. It's not my job to be in charge. Or I just sit back and criticize. But uh, sorry, he's still clean off. <laughs> yeah, he really he almost flew over. He did. Yeah, and we're back to talking to... about Nick Wayne and Edge again. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't let the high, don't let the fact that the higher ups in this company let the talent do whatever they want fool you. The stunts performed on this program are stupid and should not be attempted by anyone, <laughs> including the wrestlers. Please do not try this at home. So, I'm just, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> Assume I know what Edge is thinking. I'm I'm sorry, Adam Copeland. You can't call him Edge anymore. It's not his name. But at what point, after he's done with Christian, is he going to realize just what he's gotten himself into by going to AEW? Yeah, I think that's coming up soon. I think it's coming up real soon. I think as soon as Nick Wayne flew over that table, he kind of got an idea. I I'm hoping... I'm hoping that maybe some of the younger talent, maybe like, and when I say that, I'm not talking about the EVPs. I'm talking about like Garcia, Hobbs. Maybe some of those guys will actually sit underneath his learning tree and listen to what he has to say. It seems like Hobbs is is a learner. He's coachable. He is. I mean, he worked with Punk and said he he loved working with Punk. punk. Yeah. That cancer that told yeah. Hobbs to just think he was putting on a show for his mom after his mom had passed away. I mean... Uh-huh. What an asshole. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Darby's you know, a lot of this is, the edge. I say, well, a lot of this is fresh just because we've listened to Corny's Omnibus. But, you know, it's fresh in our heads. But it's like all these younger guys are like, yeah, it was a good time working with Punk. And then he has to work with the upper EVPs or Paige. And does and does AEW really need another faction? Uh, no, they have about six too many at this point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> Menders, the whole idea of going weekly is to not go long. And if we keep going off on tangents about Tony, then we're gonna go just. We are gonna hours. go long. Yeah. All right. So. so- Let's talk about, and I mentioned, let's talk about the Square Circle Expo while we're thinking about it. Do you have the updated guest list for uh, the I, Expo? Give me just a second and I will. All right. I'm going to throw up that nifty uh, logo there. Look at that. It looks of America. It does. It reminds <laughs> me of like Duggan's. A little, it looks like Doug, Duggan's singlet or Angus yeah. singlet. All right. I don't even know where we left off, but there's one here that's really funny. And I didn't I listen. I, I didn't listen to their um, video, so if you did, you need to fill us in on what's going on with what he was saying. Or was it just about the NWA title was going to be defended? It was, it was just about the NWA title. Okay. From what I saw. Okay. So we're going to get Nick Na- Namath. The Nimeth, Nimeth, Dolph Ziggler. That's that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. Um, uh, Steph Delander, okay. which didn't we figure she was? Isn't she the women's champ? No, that's Freya the Slayer. Oh, that's right. That's Freya. I Steph was in the match, but she didn't she win. She was in the match. Okay. Um, you know, here's one. I'm my nerd is showing. That I'm super excited that he's going to be there. And that's the Brooklyn Brawler. Yes. Yes, yes, I'm yes. so excited about him being there. <laughs> that's going to be good. Abe um, Knuckleball Schwartz himself. Yep. Uh, uh, Barry, Vanna. if you're still in the chat, I think you, I think Barry needs to wear his, uh, his jobber shirt that I got him for Christmas when he meets the Brawler. He does. Uh, and Brawler's there both days, so. Nice, nice. You said Cabana, uh, which I Cabana. figured because he was our last Hey, year. guess what? He's going to be there both days, so apparently they don't need him on AEW anytime soon. 
I guess not. And then I'm sure you were super excited about the last one that they announced. Uh, yes, I was. The Kingfish. So, oh, no. Okay. What? I just read what they said about it. About him. Oh, about Lawler? Yeah, he's yeah. no autographs. It's just a photo op. But I'm still going to try to do that to photo op. Yeah. So, yeah, if you didn't catch it, he's got the original Barry the AWA belt. going to be there. Because the picture is going to be with the original AWA world title. Ooh. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yes, because you know me. I like my belts. You do like your belts. I've got a picture with Bret Hart where he's holding the IC title from WrestleMania 8. I would say, but I think that was everybody knew that they announced, correct? Okay. I, th I think that's right. So they got a pretty And then step. um, just a little, they had a quick reminder. And I, I'm going to say this one too, because James Spence authentication is going to be there. Yes, I saw that. So if you want to so get anything, autographs. your autographs authenticated. Yeah. So that's definitely. And then you can something. also bring in other like stuff that's already been signed in the past, and they'll authenticate it for you too. Yep. Which is a really cool feature that they have for uh, for the expo. They did that last year too. Did they, or was he? The, he I, I was thinking something happened and he couldn't make it. I don't know. I thought I saw them because they, they ended up because they ended up mailing stuff in. Hmm. <laughs> That's terrible. That is terrible. Take that off. That's terrible. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Uh, no, the expo, it, it's, it's looking like it's going to be loads of fun. And they're not even done announcing guests yet. I think there's still some more they're going to get to. And well, we're, now and that we're I know that mine probably won't be there, and I'm kind of bummed. Yeah. Ah, I'm sorry, Menders. But I know you were on the edge of your seat. I was on the edge of my seat. I was hoping. You're going to walk up and say, hey, you're Sexton Hardcastle. <laughs> no, then I would have had to have taken, I would have had to have taken my, uh, my shirt that I forgot last year that I won Christian the sign. That I have, I have the five second pose shirt. Oh. It's okay. the red one, the red and yellow one. Nice. And so I want, I was going to have christian cage signed that one because you know i can't wear my i love heels because mjf signed my i love heels shirt so right but i haven't decided if i want to wear I, I i think i'm gonna wear my uh jack vaughn shirt though my new jack vaughn shirt that i got coming nice. very nice so nice hype. and i know barry said he's wearing i i think barry's gonna wear his cornet shirt again so I mean, the Bashams are going to be there, so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I'm not sure what uh, what I'm going to do for uh, apparel. I Well, I really want to wear, I really want, I want to meet the Godfather in that Jack Vaughn shirt. <laughs> <sighs> now, for those that don't know Menders, why don't you explain what's on the Jack Vaughn shirt? The Jack Vaughn shirt says, support your local ring rat. <laughs> and I'm so excited about it. Oh, maybe you'll get longer to see it, too. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe any of those guys that are, you know, yeah. the older generation. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see what uh, Nick will say about it. If, if Nick is, if I get up to see Nick or not. Oh, yeah. I think he'll get a kick out of it. I think he would. And any of uh, them. And Ron Simmons. We'll get Ron to see it. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take it and take a silver marker and just have a bunch of people sign it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, so much. There's always so much hijinks going on at the expo. And we're going to try and get Heather back on this year, like we did last year, Heather Owens. Good. Uh, working on uh, getting a date lined up for her. So that should be a good time indeed. Uh, so do we have Hall of Fame this week or do we have top so, 10 this week? So here's what we were thinking. And we are and we said we we're going to do them alternately. Mm -hmm. I was actually, I've made an executive decision regarding the Hall of Fame enders. Okay. We're only going to do one a month. 
first okay. week of the month is going to be Hall of Fame. That, otherwise, we're going to have like 25 inductees this year, and that's going to get a little over, overloaded. So, with that said, we will do our Hall of Fame this year. We'll do top 10 next week. Okay. Uh, Barry giving us updates on what's going on on NXT right now. Women's title up first. So that's Lyra and Cora, right? Yes. Yes. No, not Cora. No? No. Lyra and... um. Barry. <laughs> it's... No, it's not Cora. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to throw to the Hall of Fame package menders and then... You uh... do that. All right, here we go. Uh, Boris is Blair Davenport. Yes. I knew well, it wasn't Cora. Yeah. Well, so here we go. First Hall of Fame inductee of the new year. There you see the JTR Hall of Fame. And uh, we're doing this on an anniversary, Menders. On the fifth anniversary of his passing. And this is another how is he not in there yet. But it's our first interviewer to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. We've had announcers, Jim Ross and whatnot, Jerry Lawler. Mean Gene I wondered... is going in the Hall of Fame. So, Mean Gene. Extremely well-deserved. The first face I really remember seeing on wrestling. Yep. Because you, you know how it is. He was just so pronounced. and I've got a few pictures here I can throw <clears> up. Go opening and closing. There we go. So, and I guess I started watching wrestling in '85. Really started paying attention to it in '86. But this was this was the face I remembered, Menders. Yep. Meanest genus. And mean Gene that was not mean at all. <laughs> no, he was a teddy bear. He uh, was. Now, I didn't, until later on, I didn't ever see any of the shows where he would uh, be doing the actual commentary with Gorilla. I don't remember but, him uh, doing commentary with Gorilla. He didn't do it all. He didn't do it on, like, the national broadcast. It was always on, like, okay. MSG. Okay. But on YouTube, you can find some of the commentary. Uh, Bari, oh, we're going to get to it. Tag matches <laughs> with Hogan. I gotta, actually, I need to see if I can find a shot of him in the uh, in the ring, because... A uh, chiseled Adonis, he was not. Bless his heart. But, <laughs> but yeah, Meet Gene was, he, he's definitely one of the, when I, like, that's one of the first people I think of when I think of back, like. Oh, yeah. The legend era, as I call it, but. but yeah, he is definitely one of the faces of the golden era. Golden era, there we go. All right, here you go, Bari. <laughs> Look at that guy. It's like he's pushing out a turd. <laughs> Move over Stone Cold. He he's not the guy that got black tights and black boots over. It was Mean Gene Okerlund. Yep. You don't see it, something that you ever seen a really young picture of Gene Menders? It's been a minute. That's good. Mean Gene. Wow. It's, it's so weird seeing him with hair. It is. And with no mustache. It doesn't even look like him. <laughs> <sighs> oh my yeah. goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So but good. yeah, then, uh... um, Mean Gene and the uh, Gobbledy Cougar. Oh, doing the crisscrosses, I remember. Doing the crisscrosses. Um, mean Gene, whatever he'd interview with Ted DiBiase. Usually when the poor kids were trying to dribble the basketball ten times. Uh-huh. Well, you know, if you don't do the job, you don't get the money, Menders. And everybody but, has a price. Yeah, check this out. This is from the AWA when he was inter interviewing Andre. <laughs> <laughs> you really get an image of how big Andre was compared to Gene. 
or yeah. vice versa, how small Gene was compared to I would to say Andre. how small Gene is. Because <laughs> I think... He looks, a little, he looks a little concerned in that picture. Just a little bit. Well, bit. I mean, Andre's hand is almost around his neck, so I'd be a little concerned, true. too. That's true. Uh, another shot from the AWA. Early interview with Hogan there. He looks bored out of his mind. <laughs> I like to think Doesn't he's he? listening intent. I like to think he's listening intently, but no, I think he's sitting there saying that, the or he's getting a cue from somebody. Now. Yeah, I was gonna say he's probably getting a cue from somebody. <laughs> uh, my favorite dance partner he had in the WWF, at least, was uh, Macho. There you go. He was <laughs> because Macho his interviews were so bizarre anyway. Right. But uh, I'm trying to find another good one here because. Do you not have one of him with Shiki? Uh, I can find one here. Oh, here we go. Because I'm going to bring something up real quick. I'm not trying okay. not to go off too much on a tangent. Go ahead. You have to go and watch the Brock, like, go off on gender last night. Because it's oh, yeah. so it was, funny. It was good. He he had a talk with Shiki while he was in the ring. He looked up to the sky and says, yeah, Sheik, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. It was so fun. Jinder <laughs> Mahal's the day one douchebag. It's great. Oh, boy. Oh, Jinder. <laughs> oh, the look on the people's faces when Jinder was coming out. Such disappointment. <laughs> Such just disappointment. To know that people can still be trolled in that fashion is just comforting hey, to me. Hey, I was. Because I got on a wrestling chat chat last night. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? There we go. Look at that. He used to call me Gene the intelligent Jew. Mm -hmm. Even though Gene wasn't Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Gene mean, he'd call him. Yep. But uh, like I said, Macho was my favorite of his interviews in the WWF. But in, overall, it was this yep. raving lunatic. Because you never you knew what just... you were going to get with Rick. That's for sure. No, nine times out of ten, clothes would be discarded. Taken right? off. Yeah. <laughs> the promo he cut when he like started ripping up all of his money and throwing shoes in the crowd. It was down to his Florida Gators boxer shorts. Might have been <laughs> his piece de resistance, though. <laughs> oh, oh, Rick. Oh, Rick. But the thing is... People like Gene are missing in wrestling these days. I mean, they the are. Interview, the backstage interviewers now, they're just asking like really rudimentary leading questions, and then they just stand off to the side. Mean Gene would react. He would. Oh, thank you, Barry. I'll leave it to Barry. He knows. 800 bucks is he ripped up in that, in that promo. Oh, Jack. He could have Barry, our head accountant, because he can keep track of the money. <laughs> No, we always the, said it, I the, keep track of the money. <laughs> the promo of uh, of Jake with Damien in the shower is was really good too, just for Gene's reactions. <laughs> everything he said was so was very dry. Like he didn't, he never pulled a face or anything. He he was just the straight man to all this cavalcade of lunatics that would come backstage and do interviews with him. He was the one normal one. He was he was the he was like Joey Styles in ECW. He was the voice of normalcy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of like you though. Why did we not put him in sooner? Oh yeah, cuz we focus more on wrestlers. I forgot. Yeah, and managers to a point. And managers. <laughs> yes, you're a sick man, Roberts. Bad <laughs> yeah. enough I'm in the shower. <laughs> <sighs> no, tell well, me if I'm nuts. I'm I'm looking off to the side here. Does Shane Away not look like Nia Jax kind of in the leather outfit? I don't need. Sorry, Dwayne. I don't need that visual again. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to close the uh, close down the Hall of Fame for the for the month. Uh, like we said, should have been done months ago. Months ago. Shane in there. Well deserved. He'll go into the. Uh... I'm still working on updating the the graphic. Okay. For the start of the Hall of Fame, but he'll be going in there. But uh, yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about Raw Menders because you had opinions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get them opinions. out of you. Uh, first <laughs> off, uh, Becky got tuned up by Nia again last night. That match was terrible. 
at matches. As nice as ten as nice as matches tend to be. Yeah, it's, if she got training while she was gone, it did not show last night. Oh, she didn't get any training. She just <laughs> it it was so bad. She and I don't like to throw this word around with wrestlers because I know the vast majority of them are very hard workers and they bust their ass and deserve all of our respect. But Naya just seems lazy out there. I agree. I there were a couple times that it was like Naya, you were supposed to catch her. Naya, you were supposed to do this. Naya, you were supposed to do that. I, mm. It was sloppy. It was not fun. Champagne retains. What? Oh, champion retains. Champion retains. <laughs> so Vira, Vira retained her title on NXT for those. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? This is Thursday when this is going to be dropping as a podcast. So I rescind my spoiler alert. Well, yeah, but people might be watching now, and they might not be able to have NXT on like me, so. That's true. But I plan on turning NXT on, because I take that stupid picture out of the corner. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You could even Mm. put your face up there and, uh uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Dragonoff is not cleared for tonight. All right, so here's my question. Does that mean that he forfeits the championship? Does, Doubt it. Is the match canceled? See, match if, it was, probably... if this was New Japan, he would be forfeiting the championship. That's what they do to this day. Well, it hasn't been 30 days yet, has it? But it's a forfeiting a match. It's If there's a match signed That's to, to happen then, and he can't compete, then he should forfeit the championship. And I like Ilya, but that, that that's just me. I get that'd be it. My, if I was promoted, if I was the promoter, that'd be my rule. Yeah. Uh, Moxley had to do that. He couldn't. Uh, he had travel issues. Couldn't get to Japan. Had to forfeit the U.S. title once. Yeah, I knew that. It's all Tiffany. Tiffany Stratton. She's a reporter now. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, we're about to get the table spot in this Copeland match. Oh, are we? But, um, oh, no, okay, so, Ra- so, okay, Raw. Back to Raw. Yes, back to Raw. Okay, so, talked about Nia, uh, bloodying up Becky, which I can only assume was not supposed to happen. But, Probably you know, not. maybe it was. It could be. Maybe that's how, maybe they're telling yeah. their story, you know? I, <sighs> hey, Edge won. Till he loses again. <laughs> Till he gets uh, cashed in on. Yes. Carleton replaces Dragon Lee in the six-man tag. I did see that. Uh, it's actually Carlito. Carlito? Is that typo supposed to be Carlito? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I thought that was uh, Who are they wrestling? It's is it? I had uh, it up here just a second ago. Uh, oh, uh, Drew Gulak's group. Oh, okay. But not Charlie, because Charlie's in Japan. Right. Um, Bless you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the wife's niece. I get that's what I gathered uh oh hey barry good catch by barry becky's mouth was bloody before the big punch so there you go um, triple h with the storytelling muzzle tough i say okay uh, uh where's that uh okay so it's joaquin wild cruz del toro and carlito Carly. okay versus no quarter catch crew which is Gulak. Gulak, Miles Bourne, and Damon Kemp. Okay. I've heard of two of those guys. I don't know. Maybe I should get a put a different wrestler's face in the corner every week, Menders. Please do. As long as it's not Tony, I'm good. Well, I mean him? Unless. Don't you do it. What? Don't, don't you do it. Only on this show or on the other show, too? Only on this show. Okay. Tony's not in uh, a in zero one. I forgot we have the finals of the men's breakout tonight. Oh yeah. Ew. Sorry. Busy <laughs> looking at my phone. Um. What did what have what have you thought of the breakout tournament? I haven't seen a lot of it. It's. Uh, I like that uh, Pillman Jr. didn't advance to the finals. I don't think he needs it. Right. 
I think this is a chance to, like the name of the tournament says, this is his a way to elevate the young guys that are mm-hmm. that are on the cusp, you know? Oh, what's Christian doing? He's trying to he's trying to take the contract from Luchasaur, a kill switch. Okay, Come raw, on. raw. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know, raw. The ice. Can you please take that down? <laughs> so, okay, Bari's with me. I've seen a lot yeah. of it. I haven't seen all of it, but I saw a lot of it, and Bari I'm impressed. Approving. Hey, Bari, we talked about this with Bari. He's been uh, back on board with the NXT brand this year. He picked them as their weekly show of the year, at our big mm-hmm. year review. Uh, I got a buddy who he's been watching a lot of AEW, but he's kind of turned off by it these days. And he doesn't watch a lot of WWE, but I, I told him, you know, you ought to go check out NXT and TNA if you want something to watch. And uh, so he said he's going to do that. So I feel like I've... Help the help to steer him in the right direction. <laughs> All right. Well, Menders, you let's know, talk about... I would have I would have said the show of the year or the show of the week would have been, you know, for those two months would have been collision. collision. Yeah, because it was so two good. Months, for it was like great. Two months, it was awesome. Yeah. And, and then the now Bucks we're back did to a victory lap and killed the town. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Menders, let's talk about what we got coming up in the next couple of weeks here on the uh, on the shootout. Let me get my schedule up. On so the I know shootout or on jumping the rail? On jumping the rail, I forgot where I am. <laughs> I lose track of what day it is sometimes. I have a feeling that's going to happen a lot this year. Yeah, I got to be on my toes. All right. So, and you got do me a favor if you can at some point hit up Mike out while see if you can get me a like a promo shot that I can use for promotion. Okay. All right. But anyway, uh, next Tuesday on the 9th of January, we are going to be joined by a, what I think is a legend in professional wrestling. He literally has worked everywhere, and uh, I'm hoping he's got some some cool stories. We can pick his brain a little bit. Uh, Jack Victory is going to be joining us, uh, which is awesome for all us ECW super fans out there plus if you like mid-south or world class wcw nwa all literally name a territory other than wwf he's probably been there so oh, that yes. should be a lot of fun bar so you may have to be jumping on that with me. before next week correct i will send you matches oh yes <laughs> okay <laughs> and, and we'll see if we can get Barry to join in also because i'm sure he's seen a lot of his work also uh, the next night on January 10th, we're doing a special bonus uh, YouTube presentation uh, for the podcast. It'll also drop as a podcast, but I'm going to be talking with the voice of the NWA, Joe Galley, ahead of. And I'm the Big sitting Paranoia that one out. Pay-per-view. Yeah, that's just going to be me on this one, Minders. You get the day off on that one because we're doing the shootout I don't right before get the that. Day off. <laughs> well, no, but we're doing the shootout. But then I'm not going to make you do double duty, which is all good. Which is right, fine because uh, you know more about NWA anyway, and I feel like I yes. would just be a yeah. But Joe's a returning guest. Uh, Joe was a lot of fun the last time he was on. I, with us, so. I caught him the first time he was on. Yeah, fellow uh, San Antonio Spurs fan, uh, Texas native, so Central Time Zone, which is a plus. Yay! <laughs> that reminds right, me uh, that makes that that really made the Shotgun City Sheriff's uh, day when I told him. I said, "Just remember, we're on." uh central time and he says oh wait so that means not till seven then i said exactly he goes <laughs> <laughs> his shot his pistols in the air celebratorially in the air yep <laughs> and i have to be nice yep. to him tomorrow correct yes yep. all right uh january 16th the week after that we will be joined by mike outlaw from the st louis area one of our favorites i'm really excited to talk to him yes uh on the 23rd we're going to do a uh a peacock watch along menders of the match from january 23rd 1984 on the 40th anniversary hulk hogan against the iron sheep when hogan won the world championship for the first time uh so that should be interesting we have to get the boys did in we on figure that out how we're doing that are we just i think we're just gonna each have to have a peacock on our separate devices and watch along with okay. uh with the video because okay I, I can't put it on the feed without getting dinged by everybody for copyright okay (laughs) 
Uh, all right. Uh, January 30th, we're going to have an indie wrestler from the Carolinas, the Gigolo Josh Ballin, joining us. So he hit me up and said he wanted to come on. Have so, you asked him for matches so we can have an idea? He, of sent, he sent me some matches. Yeah, I'll have to forward okay. them to you. Yeah, please do. Kind of a ladies' man gimmick. A uh, little... It, it's a pretty interesting character, so they should be... Uh, should as be interesting as Dan Liplock? Well, I've only seen so much Dan Liplock, and plus, uh, Josh does not have uh, Rob Leach in his corner. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. Uh, we've got a couple new uh, guest announcements, Menders, to, to drop on everybody. J on February 6th, we are going to be joined by another returning guest, Stan Stackhouse. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, because you weren't with us when we interviewed him the first time, were you? I was, was not. I mean, was, that was when Narge was still with us. And it was because of you guys that I went and started checking out what he was doing and different things. So I was, I like Sam. Yes, nice guy. Uh, has a heck of a business doing the, uh, doing the stickers and whatnot on the side to make some extra, extra quiche there. But no, he was a, he was a fun interview. I'm looking forward to that one. And I'm trying to find my. Uh, graphic here for... we have a bunch of ones in the works too of people we've, we, we've we got do. in their ear and we do and uh let me get this graphic up here because i forgot to put it on because i'm a fool there we <laughs> go all right so after sam uh if you listen to the zero one shootout a couple weeks ago we were talking to zero one's videographer zach ruber and he <gasps> dropped a little teaser that we're going to uh, we're going to have him on here on the 13th of February, and we're going to pick we're going to get to the bottom of this information. We got We got to get to the bottom of it because I want the story. Damn it! He said something about Tony Khan has it in for him, and I'm I'm curious. I got to know. <laughs> and Zach's so much fun. He has a lot to say, and he's yes. he's very knowledgeable. Well, he was a blast on the shootout. He was. So I'm excited. Oh, hang on. Uh, breaking news: uh, LWO and Carlito win. Cruz del Toro got the pinfall. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, so after after Zach, the week after that, February 20th, another returning guest. I'm, uh, and we talked about doing this. We had to do part two quickly after the first. Oh, did we get Justin back? We got Justin incredible yes! back on February 20th, and. Uh, because yeah, I don't think we even scratched the surface with Justin Credible no, on the first time. No, no. I'm, I'm curious to see if we're going to get any more Polly Dangerous <laughs> visuals in our <laughs> oh, oh, those those visuals that you can't unsee. You can't unsee it! He was so much fun. Yes, and uh, plus we got to talk to him. He's been making some indie shots lately, so Real good. take his brain about that. He showed up in GCW. I'm sorry, GCW. I'll say that without burping. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, so that'll be a good time. And then uh, another thing we're going to mention in April, you know how we always do our fantasy supercar draft, what have you. Is this and, the one we uh, were working on on New Year's Eve? This is what we were booking on New Year's Eve. We didn't book the whole thing. We just made the list. We're we doing, got it started. In April is typically Crockett Cup season in the NWA back in the day. So we decided we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. So on New Year's Eve, when everybody was dancing and drinking and making merry, me and Barry and AJ were sitting at a table with you, Menders. And we, well, I kept we going, a, I kept leaving and coming back. <laughs> but, but you were involved in the in the decision making process. Yes. And uh, so, and, oh, my brother's not happy with us. I gotta, I gotta send you a picture when we're done. Uh, uh oh. But anyway, who did we forget? April, that he's mad. We forgot. <laughs> Well, there's one that we forgot that I'm going to have to find a spot for, but anyway. We can change one of mine if we need to. Okay, we may have to. Uh, okay. But anyway, we are presenting our own fantasy tag team tournament over the entire month of April. Like, every week we're going to do a different bracket, and then the last, because April's five five Tuesdays that month. Yes. So, on it works out, so the fifth Tuesday we'll do our semifinals finals, and we're calling it the Mulkey Cup Tag Team Invitational, for all you Mulkey Brothers fans. <laughs> Greatest enhancement tag team in wrestling history. Uh, check out the chat real quick. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Mellow and Trick backstage promo. Grayson Waller pops in. Trick and Waller to fight tonight. Uh, so Waller's taking over for uh, Ilya, apparently. Apparently. Juicy. 
Here I was all excited about it. Yeah. I guess I'll watch it for Trick. Yeah. But anyway, back to the tournament. It's going to yeah, be sorry. a 30, 32 team tournament, four brackets separated into eras Golden Era, Ruthless Aggression, Attitude Era, Modern Era. And all four of us each got two picks in each bracket, so eight teams to a bracket. And uh, <laughs> we almost, well, not almost, we were keeping an eye out because the Road Warriors originally didn't get into the list. So we had to make sure that that We changed. had to fix that. We fixed that. And there's another one that didn't make the list that the Steiner brothers aren't on the list, which that will be changed. <laughs> you you know what? Change Change my... Yeah, that's the right era, isn't it? You can change mine out on one? my Legends or my okay. Golden Era. Oh, Does that work? Uh, okay, because you had I Demolition. And, uh, you want to switch Demolition out for the Steiners? Yeah, I'll switch Demolition out for the Okay, because you can switch out somebody the Attitude Era, too. Who are my Attitude Era? Uh, let's see, Harlem Heat and... No, because that's Harlem Heat and ENC. Trying to think who oh E and C Edge and Christian. E and C. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take them out. Take out demolition. Oh, okay. You're not Go taking ahead. out E and C. I'm not letting that's you do was, that. <laughs> that's why I was surprised that you would make that sacrifice in the oh, name of Hell the no. I'll sacrifice demolition before I sacrifice E and C. <laughs> All right. Damn my giant fingers. <laughs> Well, there you have just a, a snippet of who some of the teams yeah, are. Just a, just a taste. But just a in taste. April, in April, we'll... Uh, you know what? On the last episode of March, we'll drop the bracket and uh, okay. reveal, make the big reveal. But yeah, Road Warriors and Steiners, no-brainers. So Right. And yet, we all forgot them on New Year's Eve. Well, to be fair, some of us had been drinking. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was a good right. girl. We were we were good actually. That's probably the best we've ever been on New Year's Eve. Yes. Yeah. I think AJ was having some fun, but uh Oh no, that still was <laughs> good AJ. That yeah. wasn't bad AJ. That was good AJ. Yeah. All right. Well, Minders, uh I, we're going to pay the bills a little differently in this uh 2024. I've I've been a little uh I guess I was a little bored today. Uh Barry making sure you know only sprite drunk. Yeah, he was. He was yeah, DD. He was so. the DD. He was he was responsible. I was also. I, I didn't drink, but uh, still a good time. I was not. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, uh, if we're gonna pay the bills a little differently uh, this year, so like I said, I I, I was busy. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> and so I'll did be you make one, one for, for tomorrow the, night too? I'm making one for tomorrow too. So. <laughs> Wait, we have Clayton Clark on. And yes, I gotta be the, nice. The Shotgun City Sheriff. Yes. Crap, what shirt am I gonna wear? Ooh, I know which one. There he is. I'm debating whether I should wear a cowboy hat tomorrow. Do it. <laughs> Your headset's not going to fit very well. Well, I'll do the Jim Ross thing where he does that. Oh, okay. Or this. I don't know. We'll I may see. Have a troubleshoot. Yeah. I could just nestle it atop the headset. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a black one at the last show. Was it was a black heel? hat instead of a white. No, he wasn't. Well, see, this was his first time. He was making his debut at Signal 10. Okay. Okay. So, 
but you know he went against Dilly Dilly. So Dilly Dilly. And Dilly Dilly made the announcement at the beginning of the match that yes, he was one hundred percent drunk. <laughs> But he came out with water. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Let's get out of here, Reb. I want to go catch an XT. Hey, we did an hour and 36 minutes, Benders. That's pretty darn good. That is. That was our goal. We were going to try yes. to keep it at 90 minutes. So Yes. Indeed. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Uh, like I said, tomorrow we got the Shotgun Steady Sheriff Clayton Clark joining us on the Zero One Shootout 6 o'clock. On the JTR Podcast Network YouTube page. And uh, then on Friday, we're going to do a new episode of Gold Rush. Me and Bari talking about the Texas Heavyweight Championship and World Class Championship Wrestling. Did you do your research? Is, we're, getting, we're doing our research. Uh, that one's going to be a little bit longer than the last episode. We did the WCW Hardcore title. <laughs> There's a little bit more to digest on the Texas Heavyweight Championship. So, so tune in for that also 6 o'clock on Friday. And uh, like we said, next week on Tuesday, we'll be joined by Jack Victory. Very exciting. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more Expo updates, too. Hopefully. If they keep dropping uh, guest announcements. But uh, until then, and we'll also do our first Top 10 Tuesday of 2024 next week. So I'll Make sure you get me of... that so I can do some research and sure. get me a Top 10 list. I will do that. All right. Well, with that said, Menders, let's go ahead and get out of here. So... I hope you enjoyed this whole nicely truncated episode. And for Menders, this is Reb reminding you all, life is hard, work stiff. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.